Amen. Uh, yeah, let's pray for the speaker. Amen. Our Lord and our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we know, Lord, you have prepared something in store for each one of us, our God. And as we sit at your feet this morning, dear Father, we want to declare that our hearts are open to receive from you. And therefore, Lord God, even as we present the speaker, Lord, we ask of your fresh anointing this morning. We know, dear Father, you cannot gather us here in vain. There is something for us to today and therefore lord god we wait expectantly from you oh god speak to us dear father even as you use the ready vessel in the name of jesus we bless you our father and we honor your name in jesus name we pray amen god bless you let's appreciate Anne. indeed thank you thank you very much now we can have a seat uh, the speaker is Jeffrey Mwithi, husband to Anne Mwithi, who was leading us. That is in case you are a visitor or this is your very first time. I think it's good to let you know who we are. And we are blessed this morning. It's a great honor uh, to come this morning and share the word of the Lord. That which the Lord has reigned in my heart uh, for me and for you. Amen. But before I do so, receive greetings from our, our dad and mom, Bishop Jimmy Kimani and Pastor Alice. Uh, they, they called just before we moved in. Where they are right now, it is 1 p.m. 1 p.m. at night. Miss Asaba. Oh. Najua p.m. in Anzaga in Inenda Ukoju Kitoka AM. 1 a.m. Thank you very much. 1 a.m. Sasamba Usiku. Nafkini na hizi kutumia. Saba usiku. Uh, they have just traveled for five hours to Toronto or from Toronto. I didn't get which, but, but there was Toronto for five hours. <laughs> Amen. I didn't get whether it is two or from. Any, but one of, either two or it's, those who have been there, they are saying it is two. Amen. To Toronto for five hours from where they were visiting another family. Amen. And they'll be there then uh, on Thursday. They'll go to U.S., then come back. But receive their greetings. Amen. Amen. Uh, have you received them? So that when, I, when he calls, I tell him I did that. Thank you very, very much. And we bless the Lord. I'm trying to imagine the things I was supposed to do when I come here. And sometimes you come here, then you forget. But I think if I remember, we'll still move on. I'd like us to move on to the word of the Lord that the Lord has laid for us this morning. I'm so excited uh, that the Lord has something. He has a word for us. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 9. I'll read the two verses. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. I'll read in two versions. I'll read in the NIV version. And I'll also read in the Message Bible. The NIV version says, this is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. Verse 24. But let he who boasts, boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in this I deride declares the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's hear it from the, from the message Bible. This is God's message. I love this. It says, don't let the wise blag of their wisdom. Don't let the heroes blag of their exploits. Don't let the leech blag of their leashes. If you blag, hello, blag of this and this only, Tell your neighbor, you have an opportunity to blag. <laughs> or you have an opportunity to boast this morning. He says, blag on this, that you understand and know me. I am God. I act in loyal love. I do what's right and set things right and fair. And they're right in those who do the same things. 
These are my trademarks. God's decree. My message this morning is the trademarks of God. I picked it from, the, from that portion. The trademarks of God. One day, an elderly lady was driving in a parking lot. Looking for a parking lot like many of us do. And the place was packed. But she saw somebody calling some shopping from the supermarket. And this one is going to drive away. And so she follows this person to the drive, where, where to the parking lot. And then stops with her indicator. I'm late to park. And this guy pulls off. But just before she gets in, a young man drives and comes inside and then poop, get in the parking with a, a black Porsche. Huh? And then the old woman is worried. She, he's so, she's so discouraged. She rises up and screams and asks this man, how could you do that? Didn't you see I was waiting? With my signal on. The young man smiled. Allogantry. And said. That's what you can do. When you are young. Strong. And fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went. But as he was getting into the supermarket. He had a loud bang. Of a metal. Striking another metal. And now he. Swallowed, he comes back. And he realizes. The old woman has banged, smashed the Porsche with her Mercedes Benz. And he screamed, Why? How could you do that? Then the old woman smiled and told her, That is what you can do when you are old and rich. <laughs> now, Jeremiah is telling us, If you have to boast, let not the wise boast of their wisdom. Nor the strong man of his strength. Nor the rich man of his riches. This young man was boasting of strength and fast and being young. And the old woman realized, I am old, but I am rich. I can afford to buy him another one. Or we can afford to go to court and see who will... And this morning, God is speaking to us. And apparently when I was looking at this, it's like God speaks to us about boasting because it is a natural temptation for all of us. All of us. We get an opportunity. There is always that opportunity that sometimes speaks to you and you feel like, yes. The Amplified Virgin says, don't boast of your skills. And especially sometimes when you have some skills and some talents, that separates you above the rest of us. There is a temptation to boast or to brag or to be proud. Somebody said, if you think you are not proud, then you, then you are. Just by the thought that you are not, it means you, you are. But Jeremiah is just giving us a warning that we do not have, to, if you are to do anything, boast that you know the Lord. But somebody said, then what is wrong if I have, if, what if I have, why should I, why shouldn't? If I have, why don't I boast with that which I have? But he says, if you have to do it, just boast that you know the Lord. There are so many people today who think they are, they are more knowledgeable. In fact, there are people who think they know more than God. True. Over that week, I saw, I, I, I saw a scenario that really scared me. It is bad, it is saddening, it is woeful. When uh, the judge in the U.S. met together the 50 U.S. states to rigorize gay marriage. And I, I, read, the, I read the discussion from Kennedy, somebody, and, and, and looked at it. The argument... You look at them and those are the people who we think they are wise. To me, they are more foolish than anybody else. 
Because they, are, they think they are wiser than God who said, it is an abomination. In fact, the Bible says even animals don't do it. Like God said, God even told the animals, don't do it. But human beings who feel and think they are wise than God would meet and discuss and legalize and their leader is coming. He is welcome. But I want to join the, evang the evangelicals who told him, come, but leave the moral issues to those who know the moral issues in this land. Leave it to us. Let him not come and throw it down our throat. If he is coming to bring it, let him not come. And you can quote me, I said that. Why? Because the Bible says so. God says so. It is sin. It is not acceptable. So if anyone has to boast, then they will better boast that they know the Lord. And they know God. And they can do what is the will of God. Praise the Lord. So if, you, if we have to you know, I read a story that uh, touched my heart about this, this man who was so wise. I need a good car. I need a puncture. And then as he was trying to change the wheel, you know, you remove the nuts. He put the nuts, but a young boy came and took off with the nuts. And there he is, wondering what to do. And there was a mad man who was watching him. A mad man. And the mad man was enjoying this person. He doesn't know what to do. Then he came and told him, can I help you? Can I help you? And this man is wondering now, how can a mad man help me? I'm more wiser than him. Then he told him, all you need to do, the other three wheels, remove one nut from each. Then you fix this one and you go. And he looked at him and he was ordering, now among them, the two of them who was <laughs> among me and this one, who is wise. So let the wise, if you have to boast, boast that we know the Lord. And he says, that the leash. Let's just James chapter 3 verse 13 tells us this, and I like this in the message Bible. James 3 13. Do you want to be counted wise? To build a reputation of wisdom. Here is what you do. Live well. Live wisely. Live humbly. It is the way you live. Not the way you talk. That counts. That is wisdom. That is wisdom. So let the wise not boast of their wisdom. Then he says, let the strong not boast on their strength. Why? It's because, and I, I like David. David talks about God being our refuge. God being our strength. God being the one who renews our strength. He gives us strength. We do not have strength of our own that we can really be proud of. And then he finally says, let the leech not boast of their leeches. Leeches, is, leeches are good. Being rich is good. I want to be rich. I know you want to be rich. Amen? There is nobody who doesn't want to be rich. I'm a kunai. If you don't have, if you don't and you have some money, you can, there's always somebody who can benefit from it. We want to be rich. But it is an attitude. It is like Jesus talking to this rich fool. This man who woke up one morning and he looked at his harvest, the field, and he realized this is my best year. Like it is to this year for those who have planted maize and amen. amen. Like Pastor Peter says, amen. Some of us feared to plant because we didn't harvest the other, the other season. Now he looked at the field and it was beautiful, wonderful. And he told himself, now, my soul, I'll go remove the barns, put them aside, build bigger ones. Then I'll stock my harvest there. Then I'll tell my, my soul, now, relax, sit down, eat, and be merry. And then God comes and tells him in Luke chapter 12, verse 21, 21, 21. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have, you have prepared yourself for? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up for himself but is not rich toward God. But God, what God is desiring and requiring of us is to be rich towards him. Amen. Let not the rich boast of their issues. But I want 
to look at the trademarks of God. However, there is an opportunity to boast. Amen. To your neighbor, you have an opportunity to boast. To your neighbor, however, however, the Lord says you can boast. And he says, you can boast on this. And these are the trademarks I want to talk about this morning. Verse 24. Let him boast, boast about this. That he understands and knows me. That I am the Lord who does three things. Number one, I am the Lord who exercises loving kindness. Amen. And number two, I am the Lord who exercises justice. And number three, I am the Lord who exercises righteousness on the earth. And for these things, I deride the prayers of the Lord. So let us look at the three, those three trademarks of God this morning. Trademark number one, he exercises loving kindness. He exercises loving kindness. And we can see God's loving kindness every day. If you wake up in the morning and you choose to see the loving kindness of God, for sure you can see it. You can feel it. You can touch it. David in Psalms tells us that we can see the loving kindness of God from his creation. Just the way he killed the world. He, killed, he, he made the heavens with his skills. He spread the earth above the waters. He made the sun to rule over the day, the moon and the stars to rule over the night. He delivered his children from Egypt with a strong and outstretched arm. In other words, God himself, we can see his loving kindness out of his creation. And in Psalms chapter 36, from 5 to 10, David says, Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mountain mountains. Your justice like the great deep. O oh Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings. The feast on the, abad of the, on the, on the abundance of your house. You, you give them drink from your rivers of the right. For with you is a fountain of life. In your right, we see light. Continue to love those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. Amen. David is telling us we can appreciate God's loving kindness by looking at his creation. However, this morning we can enjoy God's loving kindness when we understand three things about his loving kindness. Because God is kind. God is loving. He, his love is and is, is, is not adding, and never adding love, and feeling love. God is loving. Number one is God is loving and faithful. The God we worship is a God of love. Amen. And when, when I looked at this, I realized God loves me not because of anything, but just because he is God. He tells Moses in, in Exodus chapter 34, God says, and he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. He is slow to anger, but abounding in love. Amen. And David tells us in Psalms, chapter 86, verse number 5, You are forgiving and good, O Lord, abounding in love. To all who call you. Psalms 86 verse 5. He is a forgiving good God. He has. His love is abounding. To all of us. Even when we sin. When he was speaking to the Israelites. Even when they sinned. He assured. Of his loving kindness. Amen. And that's why. God's love. For us. Is not on merit. Last Sunday Pastor Ali said. And looking to the fathers, that God does not carry a can't. He carries a grace can't. Always God carries a grace card, not a merit can't. He carries a grace card. Sometimes we mess in our lives. And sometimes we even ask, am I lovable really? Am I lovable? 
because of the mess or because of the situation that you are in. When you look at yourself, when you evaluate yourself, you wonder, would God really love me? God is saying yes. He loves you. He loves us. Not because of any merit. Not because of what we have done. But because of his grace. And because of his covenant to us, his people. Amen. He is a never loving God. In Numbers chapter 14 verse 18. The part A of it. The Bible says, the Lord is slow to anger, rich in unfading love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. Amen. The, the, the A part of it, I, I want to focus on the A part of it. That the Lord is slow to anger, filled with his un, 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 unfading love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. Even when you sin, even when you rebel, God is saying he is slow to anger. Amen. And he is filled with rich and failing love. His love is bound in the covenant relationship with us as people. He told the Israelites, you will be my people, I will be your God. And he is saying the same to us this morning. He is our God, we are his people. So it doesn't matter how sometimes we feel. God's love is unfailing. Praise the Lord. God's love is unfading. God's love, his love is bowed in that covenant with us. However, God's love is also distinctive and is based on loyalty. As shown in Abraham, when God talked to Abraham and his descendants, he gave him a covenant and a covenant of love. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12, he tells him, if you pay attention to these laws and, and are careful to follow them, then the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he saw to your forefathers. So, his love is unfailing. However, he also gives the condition. That is, when we obey all the commandments that he has given us. Amen? Not what we do, but we obey his commandment. Not because of merit, but because of his grace. Secondary, God's love is enduring. It never fades or it never lasts. The love of God does not fade. You know, sometimes our love fades. You love somebody else and you wake up in the morning telling I don't love you any longer. You know, that is not God. Amen. Even those who are married, you wake up in the morning and you feel like you don't love your husband anymore. Or you don't love your wife anymore. Or you don't love your parent anymore. You don't love your children anymore. Because human love is failing. And is fading. But God's love is enduring. In Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22. The Bible says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion never fails. Amen. His compassion never fails. His love never fails. The address love of God is a, commit a commitment as his people. Even when we are not responsive, even when we are not walking in righteousness, his loving kindness is in his covenant. Amen? And there are many times we fail God. But I said, he does not love us because of our deeds. The Bible says, it's not by works of righteousness that anyone may, lest anyone may boast. It is by his grace. It is not out of the good things that we do. And that's where grace comes in. When we appreciate that God's grace is there for us. Amen. We live this life pleasing to God. And we, feel, we live this life not feeling condemned. Because his love is unfailing. It is and love is enduring. One time a Sunday school teacher asked a child in our class. The difference between kindness and loving kindness. What is the difference? Kindness and loving kindness. Listen to the answer. The girl girl said to the teacher, it is kindness is like when you ask your mother for a toast and she gives it to you. But loving kindness is when you ask your mother for a toast and she gives it to you with the butter and jam. <laughs> that is loving kindness. Amen. And it is very true. That's the same way with our God. His loving kindness is an exceeding exceedingly generous giving God. Amen. He gives us not just the toast, but he gives us butter. And the Nigerians, this Nigerians, Nigerians sing, he butters my, my bread. 
May the Lord butter your bread this day in Jesus' name. Because he is God. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. I love this scripture. It says, now to him that is able. Amen. To do. Exceeding ray. Abundant ray. Above. That is above all that you can ask or even think of. That is our God. Amen. That his blessings, he adds a butter and jam to our blessings. He blesses, his blessings are exceeding rain. They are burden rain. They are above. You know, when you think about this God, that which you think that you are asking of him, he is telling you, I can give you exceedingly. Amen. I can give you exceedingly. I can give you upper than tree. In fact, I can give you above what you've been asking of. That is our God. His love is enduring. Amen. It doesn't come to an end. His love is enduring. Praise the Lord. And may the Lord give us or give you the butter and the, your bread this morning. And he tells us, his children in, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, 7 from verse number 12. And these are his promises. These are the butter and the blend, the butter and the jam, the blessing of his children. He said that if you listen to this regulation and faithfully obey them, the Lord your God will keep his covenant of unfailing love to who? To you or with me or with you as he promised with an oath to your ancestors. Amen. Then he says, he will love you and bless you. He will give you many children. May the Lord love you today. May the Lord bless you today. Amen. May the Lord give you many children. Amen. But if you. And as his promise. Some other like many children. Receive many children. <laughs> but as if you. You know there are some who are asking if I can only get one. But as if you. <laughs> then he says he will give fertility to your land and to your animals when you live in the land he is what to give to your ancestors you will have large harvest of grain new wine olive oil and great herds of cattle and sheep and goats oh my may the lord give you and come on harvest this year that is his promise because he is god and you do not have need to do anything really or to be to merit that it is just loving god and obeying his commandments. Amen. And he has given us an open check. And he is willing to do that. Then he says, you be blessed above all other nations. May you be blessed above all other nations. May you be, I like what, you be blessed above your brethren. May the Lord bless you above your brethren. Amen. You are not boasting. If, you, you, if he blesses you above me, you are blessed. And that is okay. May he bless you above your breth brethren. In the name of Jesus. Then he says, none of your men or women will be childless. And none of your livestock will bear, will bear young. And the Lord will protect you from all sicknesses. He will not let you suffer from the terrible diseases you knew in Egypt. But he will inflict them on your enemies. May the Lord protect you from every sickness. I declare 2015, you will enjoy good health. In the name of Jesus. Because that is his promise. Because his love is unfailing love and ever adding love that is his promise and number three he says god requires us to show his kindness you're looking at trade number number one god is exercises loving kindness as he exercises loving kindness to us he also expects us and that's what he said and i also delight in the people who do these things in other words he expects us to also do the same. To be loving kindness. To execute justice. And to walk in righteousness. Amen. And sometimes you ask yourself. God. I'm too small to make a difference. Or I'm just only one. To make a difference. God says you can make a big difference. Amen. You may look at yourself and no wonder. How can I show loving kindness to anybody? How can I, you know, how can I do it? And, and, and when, I was, when I was going through this, I remember this story of this girl, of this, this, this beach, there was starfish. Uh, there, was some, there was a storm, and the storm carried starfish from the, from the sea to the beach. 
And there were so many of them. And a man passes there and looked at the swarm, looked at the many numbers of starfish, and he's wondering, and he said, like, this, it looks pathetic. There is nothing I can do about this starfish. After all, the trouble is too big for me. And so he was walking. But when he was looking, he saw a small girl at the end of the beach. And the small girl was just picking one starfish and throwing back to the sea. One by one. One by one. And this man asked, surely, look at the problem that is here. It's so big. It is so big. You think you can make a difference? You think you can help this starfish? The little girl kept on. And then she picked one and said, I make a difference to this one. Amen. It makes a difference to, to this one. The problem, the trouble may look too big for you. But remember, your act of loving kindness will make a difference in somebody's life. Amen. Your act of loving kindness will make a difference in your life and in somebody's life. God exercising loving kindness. Trade number, trade mark number two. He exercises justice. He is a God of justice. He has told us that boast that you know understand me. That I am the Lord God who exercises justice. He is a God of justice. God has the right. In other words, God has the right to do whatever he desires. He is suffering in justice. And he does that which is right. The message Bible says, I do that which is right. In other words, we do not have the right to expect God to explain to us everything that he does. Because sometimes we are in a situation and you want to tell God, I want you to explain to me why you have done one, two, three. God is a just God. And he does not have to explain to you and to me. He is suffering. By the way, the moment we appreciate that God is suffering and he is in control of our lives, then we can completely trust him, we can praise him, we can obey him. Amen? Even in situations whereby you are wondering, God, where are you? I can't feel you. I can't see you. God is saying, I am a just God. You may be going through a situation and you are wondering, God, are you still there? God is saying, I may not need to explain, but I am still there for you. Because he is a just God. God suffering in power. He cannot be questioned. Amen. And what comes into my mind is a story of the window in Luke chapter 18. We may not read the whole of it, but uh, allow me just to mention it. The window, the, the widow who persisted against an unjust God. And, 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 and the widow comes and uh, there is a case against her. There are oppressors oppressing her. And she goes to the judge and is asking for justice. But the judge is not ready to give justice. But she pleasures on. She persists. She goes to the judge at night. I assume she went during the day. He refused. And he was like the judge or in our court system or in our justice system today in this country. Maybe she knew the judge was looking for an opportunity for her to oil her, his hands. But she didn't have she was oppressed, she didn't have. And so she went during the day, she went at night, knocked on the door, until finally the judge said, because you don't give me peace, because you don't give me peace, I'll give her justice. And Jesus tells us, if that, that unjust judge would do that, who is unjust, how much more than would a God who is just do for you when you persist? Amen. When you persist, when we keep on praying, you know, we, we may not be in control of the things in our lives, but God can help us when we keep on persisting. She continued begging this particular judge, but he couldn't listen. But her help came out of persistence. The help we need today is at the mercy of God, but it's a just God. Unlike the just and godly Judge, God cares for you. Amen? He cares for us beyond even our ability to comprehend. God knows what you and I need. And he is wisely answering our prayers according to his will also. God cares about our well-being. He cares about you. He knows what we need. He is a just God. And all he's asking 
You think that's so is that we keep on persisting. Amen. We keep on asking. And I thank God that from Wednesday we are beginning a 21 day prayer and fasting for a fast. Amen. Moment of just persisting and asking the Lord. And imagine he is a just God. Amen. Then trademark number three. And I love this. God is a God who exercises just righteousness. He exercises righteousness. God is a righteous and a holy God. He perfectly conforms to his own standard. He practices everything he says. What he says in his word, he does it. And I think that is refreshing. That when God says he will do it, he will do, he will do it. You know, we live in a culture that people don't keep promises. Amen. We live in a culture whereby people are not righteous. And, and Isaiah chapter 59 verse 14 can echo our situation today. Isaiah says, our courts oppose the righteous. Do they do it today? The justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the street and honesty has been outruled. This is the real situation in our country. If you go to our courts, amen. amen. You know, sometimes you, you think about it and you can see it live. That somebody can take somebody's land, eh? go corrupt with the, the survey, the ministry of land, divide your land and issue titles. Amen. Issue? Titles. Genuine titles. And it is your lad. That is a justice. <laughs> that is a system. That our country, uh, we are in. But I, God. God says what he declares, he will do. Amen. He declares it. He will live it. He cannot do otherwise because it is who he is. In Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. And I like this. The Bible says... God is not a man that he should lie. Nor a son of man that he should repent or change his mind. Has he said? And will he not do it? Or has he spoken? And he will not make it good. You know, God, he says, God is not a man that he may lie. Neither your brother. A son of man. That he can repent or change his mind. In other words, what he says he will do, he will do it. Because he is a righteous God. What he says he will do, he will do it. And then he asks us, has he ever promised you anything? Then no, he will do it because he is God. And I declare today, that which the Lord has promised to you, it is coming. In the name of Jesus, it is coming. And coming too soon. Because he is a God who is righteous. He is a righteous God. And, and, and David has a lot to tell us about this righteous God. In, in Psalms chapter 11 verse 7. The Bible says for the righteous. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Upright men who will see his face. Psalms 6 verse number 6. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. You are just like the, the great deep. Oh Lord. You preserve both men and Beast, which we led in the beginning. Psalms chapter 71. I love this. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. Amen. I will tell everyone about your righteousness all day long. I will proclaim your saving power. Though I am not skilled with words. You do not need these words. All you need to do is declare and proclaim to everyone that God is a righteous God. Because he is. A righteous God. Amen. God is a just God. Help me preach to your neighbor. To your neighbor, my God is a just God. My God is a just God. He is a just God. That which he has promised me, I know he is delivering. Because he is God. Amen. And then in Psalms chapter 113, he says, everything he does reveals his glory. And majesty. His righteousness never fails. No wonder we sing a song. I have a father. I have a father who never ever fails me. 
I have a father who never ever fails me. Jesus is my father, he never ever fails me. Lord COVID, Jesus never ever fails. You know, he does not fail us. Amen? Maybe we can rise up and sing that song. Please, before I conclude my I'm just concluding my message. And I felt, is there something God has promised you? I want these words to echo in your life that you never fail you. Amen? He will never fail you. And because you are going to pray, not long ago from here, we are going to pray here and we, I'll, I'll ask the ministry, uh, I'll let them know when we're going to come. We want to connect. We want a God I know. You do not fail. Amen? He doesn't fail. He doesn't fail. His love is a never ending. Amen? God is loving. He is a loving God. His loving kindness is based on his covenant with us today. It's not because of what we have done. But God is saying, he does not fail. Neither will he fail us. open your mouth and lift up your hand oh, and yeah. worship this Lord who will never oh, ever oh, fail you. What is that you are concerned is this morning? He is concerned about that concern in the name of Jesus. And as we worship the Lord today, just release and surrender to Him. He is a loving God. His loving, His loving kindness does not fail, does not end, does not pass. He is a just God and He is instituting justice this morning to one of us, to you today name of Jesus. He is a righteous God. He does that which is right. He is not a man that he may lie. He has said it. He has promised. Receive your promise. Receive your promise. Receive your promise this morning because he is God. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Let me honor you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. The steadfast love of the Lord God never fails. And His mercies are new every morning. I want us to worship the Lord with that song. The steadfast love of the Lord never fails. And then I want to ask the ministry to come over here. You are there, you want to connect with somebody. You want to connect. You want to God this loving kindness God you want to him God this is my situation this is where I am I know you are not a man that you lie but I want to hold on to your promise and by faith today I want to receive my miracle 
because he's a God. His steadfast love never fails. Amen. So, Mr. Steve, just come over here. As you worship the Lord with this, with this song, please feel free. Come. Let's pray together.
see.